All right, this is the GT80 Titan from MSI. It's too much. It's, this is too much of a laptop right here. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to try to cover everything to do with the outside of the laptop, and then we'll talk about what's going on with the software. Uh, I'll do a screen capture for that, and we'll also cover some benchmarks from gaming. I'll benchmark the hard drive, and that'll all be in the second half of the video. So first off, the obvious thing that you know, you're going to see when you look at this is it's got a Cherry MX keyboard from SteelSeries. So SteelSeries partnered up with MSI, and you've got this really sleek keyboard. It's Cherry MX. This one's browns. Uh, they're going to have it in a few different flavors, but listen. There you go. Cherry MX. That also makes it pretty freaking thick because you have to have a Cherry MX keyboard in there. It's, it's ridiculous overkill all the way around. So we're just going to kind of have to ignore that fact um, until we get to the the trade-offs for being this big and heavy and that sort of thing. Also, we have on the side here a touchpad. The touchpad is on the right side, so it's really designed as a right-handed um, you know, computer. This differs from like the ones that have the touchpad here where you could use either hand on it, so you have to pretty much use your right hand unless you're trying to do some you know, freaking Mozart playing the piano type stuff with this. Now, what's interesting about this is if you want a number pad, well, you tap up in the top right-hand corner and suddenly this becomes um, a number pad. It just lights up and it's sort of like a, a touch device. And you have your, you know, left and right click down here on the bottom as far as the number pad goes. Now, let's take one more look at the keyboard before we move on to the actual computer. Uh, one thing that really bugs me about the MSI laptops is that they put the super key or the Windows start key on the right-hand side and there's not one on the left side. And we've got something really weird here. There's some redundancy on the bottom. You'll see that the, uh, the whatever this thing is, the line and then the slash. There's one down here by the space bar where you normally have your alt key. The alt key is beside that. That's where I would like to have the function key. And then we could have a Windows key on both sides of the, the keyboard. I don't use the one on the right. I use the one on the left. And I know there's a lot of people out there who do that. Um, and it's just awkward because almost every keyboard, at least if it's you know an American layout or whatever, uh, people are not used to that. So that's going to take some getting used to. Other than that, um, you know, you've got all your standard functions like you would have on a laptop. Um, you know, you can hold down the function button and then control your brightness and turn on and off Wi-Fi and that sort of thing. Uh, you've got uh, media uh, for, well, I guess volume control and that sort of thing. So you can do a few things with that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the, the monitor. Really pretty monitor. Viewing angle is pretty good from just about any way you look at it. This is an 18.4 inch. It's a 1080p monitor. Not 4K, not 3K. Uh, it would have been nice to have a little bit more resolution because this graphics card can actually push most games at crazy resolutions. However, you don't really need it in my opinion for something that's 18.4 inches. For larger monitors, you would want that. And also scaling on Windows is not so good. So 1080p for gaming, I'm okay with in this size. All right, let's go ahead and take this thing apart and just see what's going on under the hood. Now, right here, everything's very easy to upgrade. You can just slide this panel off by unscrewing two screws. Doesn't really tell you how to do this in the, uh, the manual or whatever, and you will void your warranty by unscrewing these two screws on the back. But the two screws are the ones that have little arrows saying where to unscrew them. Uh, and after you do that, this top part just slides off. I've got the screws back in there now. And beneath this, you can see a spot where your um, optical drive is. You should be able to pull that out and mount an SSD in there. I'm not sure if they make a kit yet or not, but they have for some of their others. Uh, and some of the, you know, different SATA mounts that will fit into an optical spot on a laptop should fit in there just fine. And just beside that, we have two NVMe SSDs. So you'll see those in there. There's a spot for a third if you want to add more and have more storage. Put a third one in there, uh, which is really cool. Now, this one has a curious configuration. We have 24 gigabytes of RAM and we have three sticks of memory and one empty slot. Now, this is a sixth generation i7 6820HK and that is dual channel. So it's a quad core dual channel with eight threads. So this actually is hyper threaded and all that for laptop, it's freaking ridiculous. But it's weird to have three slots populated in my opinion. I'd rather have four or two slots populated if you like. You can go and look at the, the modules on there. There's an empty slot right here on the top, not on the bottom. It's, there's two more slots on the bottom and two on the top as far as the RAM goes. But you can go ahead and if you can match up the exact type of RAM, you can grab, uh, you know, a DDR4 SO DIMM and just pop it in there. So you can do that if you want to. And then beyond that, we also have a standard mechanical hard drive. And that also can be very easily uh, replaced. The thing I don't like about this is this is so easy to open up and it's so easy to mess with as far as the components go, but you can't avoid your warranty by doing it. If, you, if we take the actually the back cover completely off, 
you can see something that I think is really cool. Now, again, this is probably going to void your warranty taking the back apart, but uh, each of the GTX 980Ms, of which there are two running an SLI, each of those are separate pieces that are installed, and you can easily remove those. If you wanted to install like a 980, there may be room for that. Maybe, maybe, just maybe there may be room for that. Um, or you could swap them out if one of them goes bad or something like that. You can swap those out. And then in the center there, we see a pretty large CPU for a laptop. And this has a really big, beefy cooling unit. Now, while I'm talking about the cooling unit on this thing, it's the loudest laptop I've ever heard in my entire life when you're in a game. It sounds like an airplane preparing for takeoff. It is too loud. It's obnoxiously loud. It's so loud that you need noise-canceling headphones. If you've got open headphones and you want to play games, well, it's, you're going to hear a vacuum cleaner in the background. It's just extremely loud. And I can see why, because you have a lot of stuff in there in a small, you know, small space that you need to keep cool. If you're just hanging out at home and watching a movie, it's fine. But if you want to, you know, like play games without headphones or earbuds or something, well, you're going to wish you hadn't because it's just too loud. And I understand putting this much stuff in a small space is going to generate a lot of heat. So that is a big trade-off for me. Now, having said all that, you can actually overclock this. They've made it very easy. There's like a, something they call MSI Shift that allows you to just easily get a jump or a little boost in speed. Um, or you can actually go into the UEFI and the overclocking options are there. So you can overclock at your own risk. And you know something, this thing is so big and so you know easy to work with. I'm waiting to see what people do as far as custom cooling solutions uh, for this. I can imagine someone might want to try to uh, build a bigger base for this and install water cooling or something like that or you know we've seen that asus laptop within the market with that goofy water cooling thing that goes in the back it's just too big but it's nice if you come home and plug it in but i wonder if someone like that could build something like that for this i'd like to see that that would be kind of interesting uh lower the noise and you know i, I wouldn't mind if it was a, even a little bit bigger because let's face it i'm not going to be taking this everywhere it's too heavy to carry around in your you know your backpack it's just too big i'm certainly not going to be taking this to the top of any mountains or anything like that uh, i mentioned you know how big it is so let's talk about that it's 9.9 .9 pounds. That's not a lot, but it's for a laptop, that's a lot. The dimensions are 17.95 inches by 13.2 inches by 1.93 inches. It comes with an 8-cell battery, and, uh, you know, it seemed to last a decent amount of time for how big it is. But, you know, again, if you're going to be on a two- or three-hour train ride trying to play video games and stuff, you're going to need to bring a plug or a charger or something. All right, let's talk about some of the other features here. This does have the killer NIC, and it does have um, also killer Wi-Fi, and you can use both of those together. Um, you know, the killer stuff, it's largely marketing. A lot of it's software at this point, but software does an okay job. And, you know, the I guess it's still up in the air whether or not it's better, better than just a standard Intel. Uh, but one of the things they've done to make this one slightly better for people who are gaming and consuming media and that sort of thing is they allow you to use both the Wi-Fi and the, um, you know, the wire connection at the same time. And the way that works is if you're playing a game or something like that, it's like, oh, you're playing a game. And it uses the, the wire connection for the game. And maybe if you're like, you know, watching a stream on Twitch or if you're maybe downloading something, it'll use the Wi-Fi to do that so that it keeps those separate and doesn't just, the packets don't just kill each other. So that should give you a better experience. Um, the audio on this is a pretty complete package here as far as the uh, laptop audio goes it sounds pretty good it's got the Dynatech uh, speakers it's got uh, four speakers underneath here plus a subwoofer on the bottom um, hearing that in a game over the, the the fans is just who cares but if you're watching a movie or something like that you can get by with it it's not going to rival speakers or like a you know dedicated set of speakers but it sounds better than most laptops out there and one of the things i really like about it is they have included a nice hi-fi dac it's powered to you know work with your high powered headphones and that sort of thing i tried it out with some some decent fancy headphones some fisher audios that i have here um and it sounds actually really good um it just gives it a little bit more power and that's going to be especially nice for you know high impedance headphones and that sort of thing but i would plug in my regular headphones because they can possibly sometimes benefit from just a little bit more power um and that sort of thing now, it also has the Nehemic audio, and I'll talk about that in a second. That's a separate audio suite that can give you, like, surround sound and reverb and help your microphone a little bit. I'm not usually into those sort of things, but it's there if you want it. All right, now, before I jump in and show you what's you know, comes pre-installed, all the bloatware and all that crap that's on here, uh, and talk about some of the software that they put on there, like the Nehemic audio and that sort of thing, let's talk about the 
ports that we have here. This side, we just have two of the USB 3. On the left side, we have our audio ports. We even have an optical port, which is nice. Hook it up to your surround sound or whatever. Uh, of course, this headphone, microphone. And uh, then we have three of the USB 3 ports there. And uh, beyond that, we have an SD card slot. Just beyond that, we have our Hi-Fi. It's fancy and gold-plated and all that stuff, but that's where you're going to want to plug up your fancy headphones. It's just a better audio. It'll take advantage of the, uh, the ESS Saber Hi-Fi DAC that they have installed here. And then we also have the optical drive. All right, in the back, we have a HDMI mini display port, USB Type-C. Uh, power connector. This will support three monitors. You can run 4K externally and I did some 4K benchmarks just you know for some of you guys who are going to be coming home and plugging it up to 4K displays but it will support up to up to three um, external displays. They say three 4K. I, I didn't have three 4K monitors lying around to try that out but um, that's what they're saying. The optical drive in this maybe some, some of you guys will use it. It's actually a Blu-ray burner. So it's not just a you know DVD player or a Blu-ray player that also burns DVDs and all that stuff. It's a Blu-ray burner. So decent there for optical, if you're still someone who's using optical. Probably no one, maybe. Bluetooth uh, 4.1, things freaking loaded. There's so many things to cover in this that I, I'm just like afraid I'm gonna miss something. For anybody who's wondering, it's the Intel CM236 chipset. Yeah, video RAM, eight gigabytes per um, 980M giving you 16 in total and DirectX, we'll see that as one big pool of memory. So you'll have 16 gigabytes of video memory. Uh, DirectX 12 is going to be really nice for that. And so will Vulkan as well. All right, this is the MSI Dragon Gaming Center. And you can see you can just monitor everything right here. Shift mode will only work if your power is plugged in, but yeah, you can just run it in green mode, save some power if you're just consuming media, comfort mode, sport mode, uh, different utilities here that are pre-installed you can add utilities exploit game caster is installed with the trial on here there's a lot of trials and stuff but uh, you know some of the software that's bundled on here will actually help to make your microphone sound more professional with that you can add games here and launch them from here and all that sort of stuff you get all your quick settings mouse is right here and it's running a little slow Which brings you you know basically a way to open up your settings quickly and that sort of thing device settings um, you know you can turn the windows key on and off and then, of course, there's high, high performance mode. Uh, ooh, dimmed out. Hope it didn't stutter open broadcaster. So there's that. All right, let's look at the Nehemic audio settings. Now, this is a suite of software not developed by MSI, but these guys are partnering with MSI. And it's just a suite of just stuff to color your audio and add bass boost. And I usually don't care about any of this stuff. So this is the preferred method for me. But if you're someone who wants virtual surround sound, but you don't want to go out and buy a virtual surround headset, this can add it to any headset, including fancy headphones. You can also add some reverb or whatever. I find a lot of this stuff just, I don't know, I don't, know, I don't like stuff that colors my audio. I get high-end audio gear. But if you're someone who wants that, it's here for you. Right there it is. This is something you may actually use, and I may actually use it as well. This works with analog microphones, and it allows you to do some automatic calibration with your mics. Uh, noise gates, noise reduction, just clean up your audio and it does have a pretty good mic input anyway. I'm using a USB AT2020 from Audio Technica right now, plugged into this computer so it doesn't work with this, but really doesn't need to. And then we have, you know, different audio recording modes and it's compatible. This is compatible uh, with different software. It's right now it's, it works with the XSplit, but it should work with Open Broadcaster, if not now, soon. So there's that. All right, let's take a look at some of the stuff that's installed on here. Oh, well, you got to see this first. There's the benchmark from, you know, the NVMe SATA devices. Just freaking ridiculous. 256 gigabytes, and there's two of those that are running in RAID. They're using, like, their Smart RAID or whatever they call it. Uh, it's just basically fancy RAID. But, yeah, it's insanely fast, especially on the RAID. The write's a little slower because it's writing to both of those since it's running in RAID, uh, essentially RAID 0. But, yeah, that's crazy that's faster than my desktop insane all right next up is the pc decraptifier and we're going to go through and show you guys i installed a few things on here so it's difficult to see but i put a check mark on the things that are on here the microsoft office got to get rid of that crap norton security why don't you just slip my wrist uh well thanks very much for doing that to me and you know i'm just going to get rid of a few things uh exploit game I, I don't use these things but they're there if you need them but there's a lot of stuff that i'm just going to get rid of social media who cares so I'm just scrolling through this so you guys can see all the stuff that's on here. And as you can tell, I installed Fallout and Witcher 3 to do some uh, you know, benchmarks. Not a lot, but the big thing that I really hate was the fact that it had Office and it also um, 
you know, had that freaking virus known as Norden antivirus. It's more of a virus on its own. It's just crap, man. It drives me insane. Anyway, enough bashing on that thing. It can all be uninstalled by clicking that magic button. So this is the PCD crapifier in case you were wondering. All right, let's talk about the benchmarks right now. So we ran a whole bunch of games maxed out at 1080p. I wanted to try to cover a few of the games that I thought everybody was going to be playing. So Fallout 4, you can see averaged 41.48 frames per second. It did drop down to 27 frames per second. We benchmarked this in a very busy outdoor area. Uh, when you're indoors, I noticed that it was hitting the 60 FPS cap. We turned that off and it was hitting almost 100 FPS. So Fallout is not an optimized game at all. Wait for some of the patches to optimize that up. Soma, way prettier than Fallout and way faster than Fallout. It's nice when you write your own game engine and it's modern. 139 FPS. Trying 3, maxed out again with all the filters and everything. Just easily 65.24 frames a second. No problem whatsoever in that game. Valley did a really good job. Uh, it dropped down to 25.9 during a scene change, but the average overall was 78.3 at 1080p maxed out. These two GTX 980Ms are freaking fast. Witcher 3, this is with filters, man. 63.08 FPS. Now I decided to do the Witcher 3 and Trine 3 at 4K, just so we could get an idea of how good this thing is at 4K. So Trine 3 at 4K, 68.44 FPS. One thing we had to do to achieve that was turn off the filters. So as you can see, without the filters on, on Trine 3, really good. Witcher 3, we decided to leave the filters on because I'm stupid, but I don't know why. 32 FPS with the filters on. That's ridiculous. Now, you turn off the filters, you're doing really well. Like, really well at 4K. So there you have it. This is the most ridiculous laptop I've ever seen. Uh, this is going to go back to MSI, but I, I would keep it, but I would use it as like an editing machine or something like that. I don't think I would be taking it many places other than LAN parties. Uh, this would not be something to take down to the coffee shop. Yes, it would. Oh, yes, it would. Sit there and play The Witcher 3 at, you know, <laughs> the coffee shop. Take a 4K monitor with me, too. You know, if you're someone who needs overkill, then here you go. And you guys just saw that this is way faster than, I mean, it's way faster than my single NVMe uh, SSD in my machine. So it's insanely fast. Uh, GPU, two 980M is really nice, but you can also get this in the standard 980 flavor if you want to. I mean, go to their website. They have this in a few different flavors, um, all expensive, all ridiculous. So ridiculous and expensive is, is really the name of the game here. But also if you're someone who just wants everything in your laptop, well, there's a couple trade-offs, but here it is.